Do you want to meet me in Los Angeles? Well, you can at the Los Angeles Convention Center this weekend, April 13th and 14th. I'll be there with MindFair. You can head to mindfair.com to find out more and purchase tickets. When you check out, if you use code OMGCHAD, you'll get a 20% discount on diamond and gold passes. So make sure you use that code. If you're going to attend, I can't wait to see you. Hey guys, I've seen a few builds that use a, what they call a mirrored room effect, that it makes the floor look super glossy and it mirrors what is above it. How is it done? What does it look like? I'll show you both examples and how to make your own and tips and tricks on things to avoid when trying to pull off this type of build. So here we are in Minecraft, and this is the effect we're going for. Look at this floor. It is so glossy, and and so, I mean, it's so glossy, it's just a mirror to what is above it. You can see I have this, like, throne room thing. Everything is exactly mirrored as... Uh, as, as you can see, I mean, it's just incredible. It's just a really, really, really cool effect. These tiles are just so incredibly reflective. Well, obviously, okay, they're not actually reflective. We're just using a really cool glass technique here in order to make it look like everything is reflected. And this is pretty epic. Uh, if you want to, like, take an epic build and make it even epic-er, if that even is even a word, -er, uh, then you can use this technique. And everything above the reflection works just as it should. And you can see that my reflection works you know, basically everywhere. So what's going on, if you, if you don't realize what's going on, this is a technique you could do really in any world, um, survival, uh, multiplayer, uh, single player, doesn't matter. Um, but basically we're using glass here as a division point between a build that is just built upside down. So we have uh, one build that is reflected down here uh, below. So uh, first, if you're going to uh, make one of these things, you need to get your spacing just perfect. So uh, I'm going to show you how you would build your own right now. So I built mine in this floating cube just because I was in uh, creative. But if you're going to build one in your world, you need to make sure that you build down as many blocks as you are going to build up. And it is the exact amount of blocks. There is no block spacer in between. Let me show you in uh, in this build. I'm going to use uh, this block of iron because it has some nice edges. But you can see one, two, three, three, four, five, six, seven blocks tall, and then the same amount, the exact same amount of blocks uh, deep. So this glass counts as one of those blocks. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, just like that. And it may be a little bit confusing because your glass is actually one of those blocks. And you really need to keep in mind that the glass uh, will, will be taking up a space as well as being the start of your mirror down below. So with this wool right here, we have the wool coming away from the glass, but the glass, but this wool is actually inside embedded into the glass on the opposite side. Same thing with this uh, wood here. The wood is actually inside flush with the glass on our mirror side, but on the reflected side or on the uh, you know IRL side, the real world side, uh, the wood is up one block. It is not flush with that glass. And this is because there is uh, basically a game mechanic in Minecraft that you can only see the first layer of glass. So if I'm looking here at this glass, I actually, as long as my hitbox isn't uh, illuminating it, I cannot see the other side of the glass. It's only the side that is facing me that I can see. So you can add a whole bunch of glass here. And if I'm standing like right here, it only looks like there's one side to this glass. So as long as your glass goes all the way from wall to wall, you'll never see an edge of the glass. 
uh, and uh, you'll only see the top of the glass. So it makes it look like a perfect mirrored surface once you do this technique. So once again, uh, decide how many blocks you're gonna build up tall and then build that exact amount of blocks down below. So I'm gonna make a small version of this over here. So I've built out my walls right here and I built them three tall. So now we need to go down one, two, three blocks and make sure that we continue this wall all the way down there. Okay, so we've built three up and three down. Now it's time to talk about our roof. And the roof, you basically need a roof. You can't uh, have it just be open to the sky because that will break the illusion because there's no way to have a sky below your build. So make sure that you use a block that looks the same on the top of it as it does on the bottom of the block. So basic, most of the blocks are gonna fit in that category. Some that do not would be sandstone. So sandstone looks nice and smooth on the top, but coarse and weird on the bottom. So make sure you just use a block that has the same face on every corner or on every side, and then add that block to the bottom here as your floor, even though it looks like your ceiling. Now you can go ahead and add your glass floor. And you can really use any type of uh, the glass. You can use any of the colors of the glass. Uh, it does not matter. So in this one, I'll do uh, this white stained glass. And I'm adding that glass right where uh, our line uh, intersects. So right, we had the top three, and that is where our glass needs to be placed down. Now this doesn't look super interesting at the moment, and that's because we need to add some type of structure that is mirrored underneath. You can do this in the walls, you can do this with items, you can even, and the best thing that I find is item frames you can do this with. But there are a few blocks that you need to avoid. So let's head back into our little cube over here, and I'm gonna show you which blocks I feel like you need to avoid. And those are just past this wall right here. So here are some blocks that will not work with a mirrored room. Starting off with blocks that have a texture that will not flip upside down. So these books are pretty cool, um, but if I was to uh, add this as a mirror, you can, it, the illusion is a little bit broken. It kind of works, because your eye doesn't notice it, but the books are lined up on the bottom of this block and you can't flip a bookshelf upside down. So you'll still have the books at the bottom of the shelf there um, on this type of block. Next is this entity, which is the uh, armor stand, and that can't be turned upside down in any way either. So you wouldn't want armor stands in your room because you wouldn't be able to mirror them on the other side. Same thing with a bed, this can't be turned upside down either. Now we're getting into some blocks like these slabs that can be turned upside down. You can place a slab um, on the bottom of, of uh, a block there, but you need to make sure that these slabs are not on your floor level. So if I was to put a slab here, the idea would be I'd put a slab underneath, but you can see the glass edges through this type of block. Same thing with these stairs. You can use stairs in your build, uh, but in fact, if you look over here at this build over here, I have stairs and slabs in the build. I have uh, this slab right here and these stairs, but they're not directly at the ground floor. Otherwise, you start to see the glass poking through on the edges, just like that. Next is gravity affected blocks like sand. Obviously, you're not going to be able to stick sand to the top of a surface. It is just going to fall. So gravity affected blocks like sand or anvils. Anvils can't be turned upside down and they are gravity affecting. Next is this, which is fire. Fire does not have any opposite uh, version of it. So fire is out. Same thing with uh, these blocks that can't be turned upside down. Signs, signs are okay, except that it you can't get the text uh, to go upside down. Um, there are types of text that you could have be upside down, like maybe, uh, P's and B's can be switched around, O's might be able to be switched around, uh, that sort of thing. So you might be able to get really creative with signs, but in general, you may want to uh, avoid them because they can't be turned upside down. And then finally, furnaces furnaces can't be turned upside down either. So you can go ahead and fill your uh, room here with blocks uh, now that, that you have built that can be turned upside down or that don't have a uh, differentiating uh, factor between 
upside down or right side up like jack-o'-lanterns would be right out so to start off let me add some light i'm going to add some light right here why not uh and in fact i am going to uh first i'm going to put this on a bit of stone then i'm going to have the light and i'm going to have an end rod because an end rod can be turned upside down so i think that will be a really cool uh sort of build so now we need to mirror this so we'll have to go underneath we'll have to break this block of glass and place the stone right up against it place our glow stone down on the bottom and make sure our end rod is uh going out of the bottom of that so now we have started the illusion of an exact mirror there, which looks really, really cool. Now, one thing that I do remember that's really cool about the grindstone is that it can be placed upside down. So I wanna use the grindstone in my build, but we need to make sure to not put it directly on the floor. The reason is, is because we'd have to come under here, break this glass, and then attach the grindstone, and unfortunately that breaks the illusion because now you can see the edges of the glass there. So we need to set the grindstone on top of a block like we set our lamp over there earlier. And this can be any block, so I'm just gonna use uh, some planks here. So we're gonna put down two planks there and then a grindstone on top and a grindstone on the bottom. That looks really, really cool already. And finally, I'm just gonna finish off this room with a design uh, just going kind of around the edge that might seem a little bit uh, not random, but uh, a little bit harder to produce. And then we will mirror this uh, down below. So if I look up there, it looks like it's right here, right here. I need to break that to be right there. We go here, uh, up at the top, there. It would be behind that block. So we're gonna go there, there. And this doesn't have to be this type of pattern that's kind of easily re uh, reproducible. In fact, if it is a little bit random, it will make it look even cooler. So now we have this, uh, you know, this sort of similar uh, kind of cool looking room here uh, for us to use. One final bit to note. Your entrance into this room will either need to be something like this, where I have a block uh, sitting on top of here because we can't have we can't have a door and a door sitting on top of each other. A, the uh, glass would look a little bit weird, uh, but also that just literally cannot happen. Um, and uh, B, you need to make sure you use a door that sort of looks the same upside down versus right side up. So uh, if I was to use, say, this oak door that has this obvious pattern on the top of it, whoops, like that, well, if I use that door down here, that would look a little bit suspicious. So I used a spruce door in order to avoid that because the spruce door, while it is slightly obvious, in fact, why are you why are you doing this to me, spruce door? There you go, now the handle is the correct way. Um, it's a little bit obvious if you really look closely this uh handle is below the the dots right there it should be technically above them on the uh replica down there but nobody's really going to notice that the other thing is that uh you may want to have some type of longer entrance into your mirrored uh, area that isn't quite as mirrored that will allow you to have a door uh, that uh, is flush. What I mean by that is if we have this sort of chute that we walk through that is not reflective, and then we get over here and everything is reflective, when we turn around, I haven't finished uh, this out here, but when we turn around, the illusion is not broken uh, based off of how we walked into the uh, mirrored room. In fact, in this situation, I don't even need to really do anything up here or over there because you should never be able to actually see that far. And you go, yeah, you can't even see that far in. So in this situation, as long as we have an area that is un- uh, reflective, then you can enter and exit the room without breaking the illusion uh, where before we kind of needed this like weird, like if you were going to have a door, uh, you'd have to have that type of like wall uh, thing there. But now in this shoot that we have made, we could add any type of door. We could add a door that was flush with the ground here. So we could put a door just like this um, and then it would all, you know, work just fine, uh, which isn't seen um, because this is a long enough situation that uh, it, it's not needed like this for instance. So we have that door, the door isn't seen. Now we can easily walk out the door 
uh, and, and leave our, our room. So you may need to have a little entrance that isn't reflective entering into a reflective area uh, in order not to break that illusion. Hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found some nice techniques. If you did, please give this video a big ol' thumbs up. Also, make sure you get future videos, tips, tricks, tutorials, and spotlights here on OMG Craft by hitting the subscribe button and turning on notifications. I'll see you next time on OMG Craft. Bye.